Federalist Number 10, written by James Madison, also known as the father of the Constitution, writing under the pen name Publius, urging his fellow citizens to ratify the Constitution, writing in the New York Packet about the same subject continued, the Union as a safeguard against domestic faction and insurrection. We're going to spend a lot of time on this word faction today. Think of it like division in modern America. Many people say America has never been divided. It's kind of a similar word. Coming out on November 23rd, 1787 from James Madison says, to the people of the state of New York, among the numerous advantages promised by a well-constructed union, would be created by the Constitution that we wrote up for you guys, none deserve to be more accurately developed than its tendency to break and control the violence of faction. The main purpose, the best benefit that we can get out of this Constitution, we're going to stop the divisive violence. He writes, By a faction, what I mean, I understand a number of citizens, whether amounting to a majority or a minority of the whole, who are united and actuated by some common impulse of passion or of interest, adverse to the rights of other citizens. Making a distinction, this is not legitimate protest, this is illegitimate, because they are taking action in a manner that is adverse to the rights of others, funneled and fueled by passion and impulse out of self-interest, or to the permanent and, permanent and aggregate interest of the community, he says. There are two methods of curing the mischiefs of faction, of solving these types of people. The one by removing the causes of the factions and the division, the other by controlling the effects of the faction. Let's talk about the first one, he says. There are two methods of removing the causes of the faction. Well, we can deal with that. One, we can just destroy the liberty, which is essential to the existence of the faction. Or the other, we can just give every single citizen the same exact opinions, the same passions, and the same interests. And then, there won't be any factions because everybody will think and operate alike. We'll have NPCs roaming the countryside. Or we can just get rid of their liberty and everybody can just do exactly as we say. Nobody will fight about anything then. But that doesn't sound good, does it? Says James Madison. So let's just skip over all of that. He goes through some analysis. And then he concludes, obviously, he says, the inference to which we are brought then is, that the causes of the factions cannot be removed. We can't make everybody the same, and we can't live under a totalitarian dictatorship. So the only relief that we can then have is sought in the means of controlling the effects of the factions. So if we have to live with everybody, being self-interested, operating and, and breaking the rules and thinking for themselves, we better deal with the consequences. He says, let's talk about some different governing structures that we might be using to solve these problems. We have a bunch of people who are different, and none of us want to live in a dictatorship, so what can we do? Maybe democracy is a good solution. He says, well, we analyze democracy, and we've seen democracy throughout history. And after a study of this subject, we can conclude that a pure democracy by which I mean a society consisting of a small number of citizens who assemble and administer the government in person can admit of no cure for the mischiefs of faction. A pure democracy is not going to solve these divisions. A common passion or the weaker party or an obnoxious individual, all going to be there. Hence, it is that such democracies have ever been spectacles of turbulence and contention. They've ever been found incompatible with personal security or the rights of property. And they have in general been as short as their lives and been violent in their deaths. Historical democracies haven't worked out so well, he says. So let's uh, maybe skip over those. Let's talk about a republic. What does a republic mean? He says, I mean a government in which the scheme of representation takes place it opens a different prospect, and it promises the cure for which we are seeking. Let us talk about these points and how it varies from pure democracy. It is different, and we shall comprehend both the nature of the cure and the efficacy which it must derive from the union, federal union. 
he starts. There are two big differences between a democracy and a republic. First, the delegation of the government in the latter to a small number of citizens elected by the rest. Secondly, the greater number of citizens and the greater sphere of country over which the latter may be extended. We have representative individuals. We have a bigger domain of governance. So he continues, he says, when we consider all of these different things, here's what we're really shooting for. He says, it must be confessed that in this, as in most other cases, like everything in life, there is a mean, there is a balance. There's a compromise on both sides of which inconveniences will be found to lie. Everybody's going to be upset a little bit. But by enlarging too much the number of electors, you render the representatives too little acquainted with all their local circumstances and lesser interests. As by reducing it too much, you render him unduly attached to these and too little fit to comprehend and pursue the great and national objects. You have to find the right balance of the representation so the representatives are representative. And the real theme and the conclusion in Federalist 10 is this. The federal constitution that Madison helped write forms a happy combination in this respect. The great and the aggregate interests being referred to the national level and the local and particular to the state legislatures. The beauty of the federal system, federal government, state and local governments where the states and the localities deal with state and local issues. But that's not really what we're seeing in America anymore as the federal government continues to gobble up many of those local powers, whether it's through the power of the purse or executive order or judicial fiat, one way or another, states continue to have to grapple for their power. Federalist 10 set the tone question is, is the country following in that same mold? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you on the next one.